Whatever. Anyway, I've already got some sunshine on my fingers, but I've uh, been playing with this impasta stuff today. Can't see it because the label that they put on it. But anyway, um, <clears throat> it's a clear gel and it's to create heavy brush strokes and lines and texture in your painting. So I'm using that. I'm also gonna be using um, some of the heavy gel gloss. And uh, the next step, I want to get some extra heavy. <laughs> and so that's just the plain, it's real thin, but it still gives texture. It just when it dries, it shrinks down a little bit more than, than these, these stand up. And if you really want the texture, then you go for your paste and you can uh, mix in with the spatula in any of these gels or pastes and um, your dry pigments or your wet pigments, whatever. So um, that's what I've been doing. I'm mixing it up. I'm putting in some more rocks here in the back kind of a little ledge thing um, because that is where we're going to put the coral. And I took a canvo board. I just started talking, you guys, welcome. <laughs> hey, this <and> Nat, <laughs> good morning. Hey, Sherry, good morning, my sis. Have snow day and get to watch. Oh, sweet, on both counts. So um, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna take this, um, bubble wrap and I worked on a canvas board last night trying to figure out how to use it because it was giving me some good textures but it was out of control <laughs> so I'm afraid um, to mess with it because I'm really liking the way it is but you know I never get to learn anything unless I just go for it so I'm just gonna go for it today and we're gonna try to do some of the corally looking thing up here. And if it doesn't work out, then I'm just going to, just in case, um, I've got this heavy gel and we will just cover it up and do something else. So, um, I have a perch over here. I'm gonna sit down for a second and figure out where I'm at. And I know it looks <laughs> a little, especially from this camera angle, looks like she's had some work done. But I do have her covered um with some gold armor let me bring her up a little bit if you guys can see and i will have to do more but i'm trying to get the darker armor underneath her tatas right now <laughs> and then i will do the highlighting and also take some of the highlighting off of her personal stuff um narrow it down a little bit but i'm happy with her except i've had real big issues with the arm and um, so I just thought I'd point that out. <laughs> so, you guys can share in my pain, <laughs> but, um, but it'll come, I know it will. I worked a little bit on the seahorse over here and stuff, but um, I'm ready to, to go for the bubble wrap. So um, I just wanna figure out what kind of colors. I do like this teal looking aqua that she's got. This is supposed to be, I don't know what it looks like there, but it's supposed to be a jewel. And it's supposed to be <clears throat> more teal than the blue that's behind it. But in working with the gel as it dried, I got to see what it was actually gonna be. A lot of times if, if you're putting the gel down, you're putting your paint down, everything looks great. And then you come back when it's dry and things have either lightened or darkened or whatever. Um, most of the time it ends up especially when you're working with an underwater sea uh, scene, it is fabulous. It just puts in its own shadows for you. You don't even have to do it, seriously. Like weird things happen, like these, these things. I don't know what that is. I don't know where that came from, <laughs> but I really like it. And um, that just happens with the gel. So it's fun if you haven't done any texturing, I would encourage you to give it a go. You give it a try. Welcome, paintings by Randall. Welcome, Jailbird. Oh, so Shannon's here too? Yay! The gang's all here. Good morning, sweetie. So I was going to tell you that um, Shannon, my daughter, is the inspiration for my mermaid. <laughs> I'm not saying... <laughs> I'm just saying 
that she is a warrior and she's the inspiration for a lot of the women figures that I put in my paintings. So I don't know if she ever knew that at all. <laughs> Good morning, Shannon. So, but she's a warrior and she's graceful at it. So I love that. That's that whole personality thing is what I'm trying to get out there. So platform this is we can be hanging out. I don't know where Val's from, but we've got Georgia and Texas and Virginia Beach. Where are you guys all from? <laughs> That's so cool. Okay, so there is some of the lemon yellow. And I think what I'm gonna do is first I'm just gonna put it on a spatula. Just a whole bunch of different crazy colors, browns, teal, yellow. And this is gonna be scary and probably wrong. <laughs> okay, all of that negativity is gone. Let's start over. All right, this is gonna be cool. Check this out. <laughs> and I just wanna go in the shape of some sort of growth, I'm thinking. In whatever colors. So if I wanted just to leave it like that, I could. Um, I won't. But I could. But playing with the spatula is so fun. You can just, you make rocks so easy. This is turning it into a piece of a rock right here. <laughs> Watch this. I don't know what you guys are seeing. If it's, if it's so shiny because of this gel that you're not able to see it or what. And on those other parts where it it goes a little bit too far than you wanted, then you can just push in a dry brush right back up into your gel. Oops, I got some of my grass. Just pat it around. I mean, if this is dirt and coral and whatever, it's going to be lumpy bumpy, you know. All right, so now I'm going to take my bubble wrap. I'm going to try it anyway. And I want a little bit more of a liquid. Maybe a little bit of this. Just want it to show up a little bit more. And probably some purple. Let me find some. Unicorn spit. You know I gotta have unicorn spit. Kentucky, oh, did I say Arkansas? Washington, Washington State. Cool, welcome in. Sorry, I have Arkansas on the brain today. <laughs> you can see it, yay, thanks Sherry. All right, so a little bit of purple, gonna mix that in with my gel. some of that on there. All right, so before I keep doing it with a spatula, let me see what I can get with this. So anyway, you just lay it on it and just start mushing it in. so cool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this purple part right here. This is where I get to be a mess. Just drag it around. Why not? It's 
so I can't, I don't know what you guys can see. Um, I'm a mess. But um, I love the little circles that it put on there because it gave it some sort of detail of a different type of a plant. So I'm just going to get rid of some of those. Some landed on my crystals. That's supposed to be crystals, guys. I need to fix that. So let me uh, scoot it up to you a little bit if you can see maybe. Really kind of an ugly color happened right there. Um, but I'm going to leave it and see what happens when it dries. Let's see, where is it? You see? It just gave it a whole new bubbly kind of look. I had the big bubble wrap, but um, even for this size, it was it was too big. <laughs> but it was fun. I'm gonna do that again, but this time, I'm gonna go ahead and we've got our little bubbles textured and all that, so I wanna take um, a light color of some sort and just drag it through, maybe brownish, and drag a palette knife through and see if I can get some little branchy looking things. I may not need them. It may be worse. We shall see. So, Paintings by Randall. I uh, like your desert that you're painting. I was like, last time I saw you were painting snow, I turn around and you're painting the desert. <laughs> Versatile. This one's some type of different shape coming on up here. But I'm not getting it with a spatula, so like I always do, switch my tool out. Let's see if I can get it with a nice, long, spindly brush. I'm gonna twist it as I go up. No, I, let me get a different color. It's just not doing what I want. I want a little bit, I, I do like this now that I've seen this. If it turns a little bit more yellow on that beige, I'm gonna really like it, <laughs> just a little. So I'm squirting a bunch of this um, Lumiere or whatever it's called. Um, their iridescence, really nice paints. They came in a little set. It came in a different container, but they're, they're pretty. Oh. They're pretty colors. So maybe something like that will be, will be helpful. I have so many different colors on here anyway. Let me just do something weird. I'm really enjoying this whole process though on this painting. And I told my husband, I can't wait to start the next canvas. And it's not really a canvas, it's a Canva board, but um, it was exciting because I was somewhat intimidated on this one. Just. I don't know why I do that, but that's okay. Yeah, I got over it. I worked through it. I'm painting on it. Oh, you're back. Is everything good? Yeah, it's just a little oceany back there. 
I'm gonna add a little bit of white and try that bubble wrap thing again in another area. Oh, thanks, Randall. Crazy toddlers. <laughs> I hear you. Oh, but they're beautiful. I really like this jade green. <clears throat> so I'm wondering, maybe I should put a little bit of that in with this gel. And just touch it to her staff there on the gem for the jewel. We'll see. <laughs> My answer to everything. Okay. I'm just gonna go ahead and put a bunch of paint up on here again. I'll do my green and brown, that would be fun. Right about. I love how just touching the painting just here and there, um, you can already start to see plant life and things. Rocks. Or I have an overactive imagination, maybe. <laughs> that could be. It's a purples. I do like when I'm painting something rather large, if I've introduced a new color, to take that on my brush um, and just kind of um, move it around that same color here and there uh, because that way it, it doesn't all focus on one part where it looks like you've been working on something to fix or whatever. <laughs> so I'll take it and put it over here over here somewhere, anywhere, that that color would work for. I did put a little bit of hole in here, gave myself a little tunnel. That was fun. This is a part I'm not happy with that I'll be working on again. Isn't it amazing you just touch it and it changes everything? Yeah. What? <laughs> When I was working on her face and her arm, it was like, I forgot what it was like doing portraits. And um, man, just the tiniest little change makes all the difference in the world. <laughs> One little touch here or there, and it changed as either expressions or shapes of something. I mean, just minute. But it was so fun, and it kind of made me want to start getting back into oils and getting back into portraits again. But I like doing the um, animal portraits better than people, unless it's uh, little kids. Little kids, they're fun because they're pudgy and they're fun to paint. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Yeah, self-portrait of the mermaid. Well, that's my spirit, all right? Strong. <laughs> And I'm a princess. <laughs> uh, that's about as far as that goes. Princess warrior. All right, so here we go. We're gonna put some green. Back to the greens. 
right here. Ooh, that's bright. I like it. So in order for it to not look all one color and everything, I just mush my brush into whatever other colors I'd like to see with it. I think the, um, it's an H. <laughs> yeah, this looks wrong. That's okay. Blue. I love ya. <laughs> you too, man. I just couldn't believe that you got sacked again. <laughs> Honestly, y'all, I don't know who's all in this room, but you know, follow paintings by Randall. He's a good guy, even though he's sitting in the, <laughs> the can. There's no hate speech or anything like that, y'all. Just all good info. Sweet, uplifting. So give him a follow. He'll be doing lives again in a week. <laughs> I like that little wispy, feathery looking thing that just happened. All right, let me see if I can get anything on here. I just love playing with <laughs> art and different things. I remember when I was using the unicorn spit and I tried the wax paper and oh my gosh it was so cool you could just squirt the unicorn spit down on your canvas and add your white or your black whichever color you wanted and then put your wax paper on and just start making circles or drawing with your fingers on top of the wax paper and then when you peel it off it is amazing it's like a pour but you got to do stuff it was it was very cool so if you haven't tried that and you have your unicorn spit give it a go <laughs> work so well. Let me dip it into white and see what happens. This may be right up here where the highlight might be. I gotta put some more streaks and stuff in. Oh, oh wow, look at that. Don't panic. Just make another one up here a little bit. Happy accidents. Can you guys see that good? Oh, that's that's just really very cool. I like that. Um, I want a little vine, of course. I like to have it beigey. If Bob Ross can help me out here.
up in front of it. Welcome in. Oh, Antonetta, welcome. Thanks, Randall. Appreciate you. I'm looking like a bonsai tree now. So I have to just stop, you know, I'm getting like so focused on one thing. It's important to step back and look at the overall painting. <laughs> I'm telling myself, <laughs> I'm not telling you guys. No, I know you know what you're doing. And it's like, if you've ever made a mistake that you think is a mistake and you're, you're trying to fix it, do you know... <laughs> It's like you try and hurry to fix it. Like, you don't even want to look at it. <laughs> Just get it done. But a lot of times a mistake actually is not a mistake, or at least not all of it. You want to save some of it. I just want to tap a little couple colors of the light blue into some of the orchid. Or maybe on the brown where it's not so brown. I've got that heavy gel. So all of my little marks, it's going to stay that's a plus and a minus you just have to remember if you've got a straight line and you didn't want it you need to take it out while it's still malleable <laughs> more colors of that orchid down below would be nice. This is trying to put some more on my plate. The white that I'm using here is iridescent, so I'm not sure where, how that's going to come out tomorrow, I'll know. And if it's gross, <laughs> then um, I'll just paint over it. And if it's really bad, it's, it can always turn into a rock or something. You know, what's funny is the other day, I almost was like, forget it on this. I, I was this close because she was just driving me crazy. I mean, when I started painting her, she was this way, facing here, and then I flipped her around, <laughs> and then she she became a man, and then I flipped her back around. I mean, her tail, everything. I changed her a million times. So finally, I was satisfied with that, but I'm still having an issue on this arm, and I want it to be back, um, but I made a boo-boo when I put the staff in first. <laughs> Because, you know, you don't want it to look like she's in a position that the staff can't be upright, or it is almost upright. So I have to bring it back down and across. When I do, it looks like she's, she's out like this instead of like this. And I think the reason is because I have to shorten the forearm and then it's got to still match the uh, portions of this arm. So... Anyway, right now, it's just covered with hair. It may 
go in just a little bit and then be rest of it just covered with hair and let your mind figure out that there's got to be another arm in there because this staff is hanging in, in midwater. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, you love seeing me use the palette knife. I love using the palette knife. Isn't it fun? You just kind of automatically feel like an artist. <laughs> I don't know. All right, I'm gonna take her um, little armor there and I just wanna touch this. I'm using this elegant gold. I got it eons ago. So it's a fight to get it open, but um, anyway, I've added black and brown under here with and mixed in with the gold because it was just so bright. And it looks bright there, so I don't know what you guys are seeing. But anyway, so she's got some shadows, but I do have to lighten her up here. And then this looks more like a hip hugger pair of jeans than the V that I was looking for. So I need to do a little bit of that. But I'm just going to touch what's bugging me right now. I know, I just put it right in that container. I want this. I'm just basically trying to get it where this ray of light that I've not painted yet will be um, hitting it. And she needed a little bit more coverage. So I'm gonna let that sit there for a second. This takes a while to dry, but it's worth it. And so the gel also takes a long while to dry. Um, now a lot that I put down in the very beginning, it's dry. But like, I'm gonna resin over this so I'm gonna let it sit for like a month <laughs> to make sure that it's not gonna go wanky on me. I did wanna show you guys, <clears throat> last class we were painting on resin, so I haven't resined over the top of the last resin yet, but I wanted to show you what I added. So we have a seahorse that we did in class and just a little bit more and then the sea turtle and now we get to resin it and it's so cool because the sea turtle actually makes a shadow when you look at it under a different light and it's like it's because it's up on that layer of resin so this is gonna be this is gonna be fun I really think these are a set and it's inexpensive. <laughs> I don't want to let it go. So it's going to be up there just like I don't, I don't care if it sells or not. I want to look at it for a long time. So um, anyway, there's the front of the box of Atlantis. All resined. And then... Out pretty cool. 
like 50 pounds of resin right there. Welcome, Peggy. Anyway, that was fun. That was crazy fun. All right, I'm really liking this. This is so pretty and soft. I like that soft pink looking. I, I'm not sure if that's the purple or that white or the combination that's done it, but I may have to come back in and go over it with in some spots. And what I do, if you're painting an ocean, and I'm sure there's lots of different ways to do this, but this is the, the way that I've found. So I've painted my ocean and now it looks like everything's in the foreground because I just added those flowers. I want them just behind her a little bit. So what I'm thinking is once it's dry, what I do is I take my gel and the blues and teals and dark and I kind of mix them all together, not, not like where it all becomes one color. So you still want, like a fan brush has the three or four different colors on it. You do that with your gel and you just brush it across like that with a fan brush. And then you take a nice soft bristle big brush like this, but real soft, and slightly go across it. And that way the flowers or whatever that you've got and you want set back, that water goes across wherever you put it and it sets it back for you. So it's an easy way to make it look like it's underwater, like back here these things. I've done that with everything. And in the very end, I'll probably do it again with different colors, trying to bring out like this is really dark. I'll, I'll probably put a little bit more uh, light around here from here. But anyway, it's just, you know, look at it, take a step back, look at it and decide. I do want some white or uh, lights up here. Just right One of the things that took me a long time to get over was um, when I had painted something, I was afraid to go over it again with a brush and other colors, like it was going to mess it up. But what I've found is usually it only enhances it. It's very seldom. Now, skin and facial structures, stuff like that, not the same. But when I'm doing the seascapes and landscapes, to go over it with the gels or the different colors, it just makes it look so, so pretty. It just adds a whole nother dimension. Let me just show you that corner. Isn't that pretty? Don't look at my messy room, guys. <laughs> this is trash. You should have seen me moving stuff around this morning, trying to get it to where I could do this. Instead of a box, it's different when you're painting on a canvas. But I am going to add a little bit of the, um, these are the fish that, uh, it connects to this conversation. Hold on. <laughs> these fish, let's see, where are you? Okay, those clownfish, those I did off to the side um, with the gel and paint on parchment paper. And then I scraped them off and put some fresh gel on the back once they were dry, put some fresh gel on the back and then just stuck them because I'm going to resin this. So, but now I want to go back over them because they, they look pretty messy. So, but I'm, I don't know. You guys probably don't even want to stick around for that. <laughs> it's just painting over fish that are already stuck on there. <laughs> but 
but I thought it was kind of neat because it added um, just that extra little bit dimension and I really want people to be able to look at this and enjoy it just kind of going around from piece to piece the treasure chest and all that I have to fix this this is clearly not right it's like totally square I don't have any ledge here so you know I'm far from being done for sure but um, I'm really loving this piece. I, it has been a pleasure. A scary little pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome to my world, Randall. <laughs> Very cool. I want some blues over here. And this purple. And that's what I do. I sit in here with a cup of coffee. And I look at it. And I think, oh, it needs this here, and it needs that there. And that's what, so, I think I just want to do one with just all coral and plant life. It's so fun, you guys. Grab a board or something today and try it. If you get a minute, I know you probably, you all have all the artists in here, Shannon, Sherry, Randall, Val, whoever else, <laughs> and Tonetta, you probably all have already. But sometimes painting is like new every time you do it. It's like you've never painted before. <laughs> I really do like the highlights on her side. Um, they were lighter, but once I put this light in, I think it will bring that back out again. But I wanted that cast of teal on her as a light spot, and it turned out. I'm very happy about that. Much to my surprise. Aw, thank you, Randall. Very thoughtful, very sweet. Alright, so the clownfish were fun to paint. They sure got dark. So I'm just gonna brighten up where the sun would hit, mostly. Here and there. And adding a little bit of gel, keeping them, I want them fluffy, you know? Fluffy, fluffy clownfish. And once this orange dries, then I'll go back again with the black and white. See this little guy hiding in the background? I like him. He's the shy one. I haven't named him yet. dark so I don't know have you guys ever made fish off on parchment paper before it's really a cool thing when it starts to dry when the gel starts to dry it kind of it kind of shrinks on the parchment paper and so your fish or seahorse starts to wave a little bit, but it actually adds a lot to it. It really looks like fins. <laughs> it's very cool. Give it a go. Oh, thanks for the follow. Christy. That's you, the fish in the background. Actually, you're my inspiration for this one, hun. My daughter. You are more this. You just think you're this. <laughs> cool. Well, guys, I'm going to call it quits just a little bit, but man, I'm loving this. That was fun, and that was just the bubble wrap and uh, paint. 
how how fun so try that <laughs> try it all anyway thank you shannon for my moderator you're the best and paintings by randall jailbreak soon um bestie <laughs> i love your i love your desert it's looking fabulous Sherry, thanks again. Val, thanks for hanging out and happy snow day to you. Okay. Love and light to everybody. Bye.